for tapes, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday afternoon, September the 4th, 1983. Labor Day weekend teaching and deliverance seminar being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campground, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Steve Bell of Dallas, Texas is the teacher of the afternoon. This tape is a deliverance service. I want to just let some of the Word minister to you this afternoon. Because in the ministry of the Word, there is deliverance. Speaking of the Word will bring deliverance. Praise will bring deliverance. God's made all kinds of avenues for us to get free. Praise His holy name. First of all, go with me to Ephesians 4. And you know, you're all familiar with the 11th verse. Now, God's been doing something here, <laughs> to say the least. And uh, I believe it's God. You know what he showed me? The primary thing he's doing here. He's teaching us how to love one another. Because love is a decision. And I decide to love. Decide that I'm going to love. In spite of what's coming at me, I'm going to go at it with love. And that will consume. For perfect love, cast out fear, and love covers multitude of sins. I was weeping today because God showed me the body of Christ. And I saw us trying to devour one another with doctrine, petty revelations, and all those other things. And it's in our homes. It's in our marriages. It's between us and our children. It's between parties and factions in the church. It's in our government. It's everywhere. And one of the primary ways the enemy uses to get us is, first of all, to divide us. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. So he divides and conquers, divides and conquers, divides and conquers. He liked to conquer this place. He liked to conquer me. So if you remember that the primary modus operandi, method of operation, tactic, wild, as the King James calls it, is first of all to divide. First of all to divide. Even in my personality. If he can divide me inside, he's defeated me. And the primary reason most of us can't put on today because, brothers and sisters, we've got to put off the old man before we can put on the new. My God, I want that robe. And I'm working out my salvation. Fear and trembling. I tremble because when I stand in a place like this, I say, oh God, what about me? God forbid that I should try to point the way for others and my, myself become a castaway. So I've got my own personal walk to deal with. Now, I don't want you to hear me wrong, but I've been contending for six years now, and I'm, in some ways I'm a baby. In some ways I'm a, <laughs> a giant. I've been through a lot. I've been in the fire for six years. And every time I think it's going to let up, he just turns it up hotter. And you know, he, if he can't conquer us, he'll try to wear us out. I'd like to just go off to the wilderness somewhere. Fast and pray. Read the Word. But every time I look up, there's somebody hurting. And I found out, don't hear me wrong, 
that this word I don't know as much of as I'd like to. But I know one thing. What little I've been to, able to get, I've had to walk it out. And it seems like every little tidbit I get, he makes me spend days and weeks walking and walking and walking and walking in that. So it's not how much words you've got up here. It's how much you've walked in. Because knowledge puffs up. And we've got a lot of spiritual experts. But we need some people in the trenches. And don't hear me wrong. I'm not. I'm just speaking out of my heart. Now we can cloister ourselves, brothers and sisters. I tell folks, I say all the time, I'm having somebody come to me and say, "Brother Bell, pray for me. I'm working down at this place, and I'm the only Christian there. And they're all heathen. They're smoking and cussing and cutting up and so on. Pray that God will put me somewhere where where they're all Christians." And I said, "No way. We're the salt of the earth. And listen." We can sit gathered like this week after week after week. But one of these days, we've got to raise up our skirts <laughs> and go. And this is, not, this is not where we live. I would to God that it is. But see, I went to a Baptist college where I met my wife. That's the only reason I can figure out I was there. But anyway, praise God. <laughs> But my pastor talked me into that. <laughs> same college. There must be something over there. Same college Ida Mae Hammond went to. Same college Wynn Worley went to. That's where we went to college. I hope it's good. <laughs> but, you know, we got out there on the, on the hill, we called it, at East Texas Baptist College. And for nine months, oh, God. Just vesper meetings and chapel every day and living in a room with a roommate that was a Christian and we'd argue the word and we'd have big fusses over the rapture and we'd have big fusses over Arminianism whether or not there was Calvinism or Arminianism there's something going on all the time but brothers and sisters it wasn't a real world and one of the problems with Bible colleges and schools is the fact that we pull people off into that environment and it's not a real world and you don't grow in that environment you grow where there's resistance you grow where there's problems. You grow where you've got things to overcome. Hmm? Amen. And the Word doesn't really work in me until it's challenged. I got, it's got to be challenged in me before I, I know that I've got it. And I've got to take my stance then, having done all to stand. Amen. Now, in Ephesians here, fourth chapter... 11th verse, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, what we call the fivefold ministry, for the perfecting of the saints. I understand that this is a medical term. It means the setting of a fraction, a fracture, rather. It's interesting how when God talks about knitting us together, that word is the same word that they use in med medicine for a ligament. And I understand. Maybe the doctor here could help me. But I understand that a ligament is one of the most painful things to tear and one of the slowest things to mend. That's what I've been told. And the ligament's what holds the joints together. So he says when he says be knit together in love, that word knit there means be knit like a ligament. The ligament of the body. Okay? It says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry... And for the edifying of the body of Christ, the building up of the body. Amen? Till we all come in the unity of the faith, praise God, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, a completed man, a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It's time we got rooted, established in something where when things come along, we don't get tossed to and fro. We're able to take them like mature men, bring them to the Word, look at them, pray about them, say, God, if this be true, if it's not true, Lord, I reject it. 
I want the truth. Amen? Verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now that word in verse 15, speaking, it means to deal faithfully with the truth. Deal faithfully with it in love. Amen? And it says, even Christ, whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. How does it edify itself? In love. If we don't move in love, we're not going to receive anything. No matter what. Praise God. Now, there's a prayer in this book of Ephesians in the third chapter, and most of you are familiar with it. Third chapter, 14th verse. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, that's power, dunamis, by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in what? Well, uh, established, foundation laid in love. Now, it's one of my little pet doctrines, I guess. But God showed me something here one day because I went through an experience of somebody taking a 35-pound Bible and every once in a while they'd come up and they'd hit me right in the head with it and say, you better get in the Word. You better get grounded in the Word. One day I was reading this and it says, no, son, you don't get grounded in the Word. You get grounded and established in love. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and lie to you and tell you that I've always been able to move in it. I've got up, up sometimes on Sunday mornings, the Agape Fellowship, and I've cut my blessed sheep to ribbons. And most of it was my problem. It was my bitterness. It was my conviction. It was my rejection coming through. And I found out that rejection can affect a ministry in a devastating way because that, that will come through. And what I've got to do, and I've been guilty of it since I've been at this camp, I've got to cut somebody else down so I can build myself up. And that's where a critical spirit comes from. Somebody that's insecure, somebody that's been rejected and feels inferior and unwanted, and unlovely, and ugly, and undesirable. That's what rejection is. And brothers and sisters, that's the master stroke of the enemy. Because the primary commandment we've got, of all the things we hear, taught, all the tapes we listen to, all the books we read, there's one commandment. That you love one another. And when you've done that, you fulfill all oh, you know. Now that is so ridiculously simple. That, that we just can't do it. We can't believe it. You mean that's all there is to it? But we got a problem, don't we? Because I know right now, if I run out here and even put my hand on one of you, there's something in you that's... Mm -hmm. Amen? It's hard, isn't it? I'm not going to say you do it, but I, some of you may. I say, come up here, brother, and greet me with a holy kiss. <laughs> come on, put it right there. Turn around and sing to somebody. Look them right in the eye and say, oh, is it easy? What's the problem? Oh, they might see that zit on my face. Uh, oh, I, ooh. My breath, you know, might be bad. Now, all those things. Uh. But it's the master stroke right where the target is. Because if I can't love, <laughs> I can't flow. And I can't grow. But my word tells me that I've got to be established 
grounded, rooted in love. Now, my word also tells me in Matthew 13 that this word is like a seed. And here I am today. I'm a sower. Oh, God, let me sow some seed in this place today. For a sower went forth to sow. Some fell upon rocky ground, and some fell, but some fell upon good ground. And it bringeth forth. So, he's trying to get us established in a environment, a culture, if you please, of love. That in that culture, there might be good ground, warmth. That soil, I, I got my garden out too late this year. I got a little old garden patch back there, and boy, I was going to get it. I finally decided I'm going to do it. Boy, I went down and I bought me some peat moss and manure. That old black Texas gumbo is just like a rock, you know. And I put peat moss and I put manure in there and I scattered fertilizer. And boy, I got me a tiller. I went down and me a tiller. Back and forth I went. Back and forth I went. I worked that thing out. Boy, I put me some poker in there. And I put me some green beans in there. I put me some tomatoes in there. And I worked that out. But see, I got too much fertilizer in there. <laughs> and my tomatoes just wouldn't grow. They just sit there and they just turn browner and browner and browner. I kept waiting. And they're still sitting there. Three months now. Just, but but for a seed to grow, there's got to be uh, the soil's got to be warm, and there's got to be some moisture in that soil to break that seed coat. One of the I had to study botany in college. I didn't want to, but it was one of the courses I had to get a science course out of the way. It was it was interesting watching those beans grow and all those things we had to do, you know, and and seeing how that that seed has a coat over it. And it's got to be, it'll just sit there for years and years and years and do nothing. But put it in the right place. Put a little water on it. And all at once that coat on that seed just pops open. And out comes a little sprout and begins to wind its way right up through the dirt. Light. So, what God is wanting to do is put the word in me. And I become the incarnation. The word in flesh. And, and, and that's the Antichrist. The Antichrist says, that can't be. That can't be. Christ can't be in the flesh. Is Christ come in the flesh? Amen. Right, look here. Amen. All right. But the problem is sometimes we get in this thing of wanting to get grounded in the Word. Now, that, that may be just a technicality to you, but to me it's very important because of what I've experienced. And the importance is this, is that I found out when people take that confession and that approach, they get legalistic. And they begin to kill with the word, because the word often comes without love. Amen? So, I pray, and this is my confession for you, and I speak it as a faith confession for you, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, in your spirit, man, in your very center of your being, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height of what? Of love. Amen? Amen? In other words, that you know, may know how many, you know, you may know how long, how long, how many, how many do you love? Everybody. For God so loved the world. How long do you love somebody? Hmm? Forever. How deep in yourself does that love go? To the very ground of your being. How high does it go? All the way to the Father. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Now see, we don't come into this love by knowledge. It's an experience. Now, there's got to be a balance between our knowledge and our experience. Amen? Now, I started out with the name it and claim it stuff. We... We had a brother come one day and he says, he says, you know, I got a, a talking bird. I forget which kind it was. And he started out in that 
in that thing. And this talking bird, some kind of parakeet or something, it, 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 it says something. It says, I'm an eagle. And all day long that thing says, I'm an eagle, I'm an eagle, I'm an eagle. And brother said this, he said, One, if any day I walk in and I look in that cage and there's an eagle, I'm going to change my theology. <laughs> Come in. So I may talk all day about what I am and this and that. But bless God, i got to walk in something. And I just found out a way to work on some of that. And I said, God, if this thing is just all theology and talk, then forget it. I lived in that realm. I lived in that realm. I preached in that realm. I died in that realm. Every day I died. Talk about dying daily. But one day I said, my God, and, and there's something we can do with it. And, and, and he put something in my heart. And there's a Christ in me that wants to do something for people. Now I can stand up here all day and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. So what? You know what I've learned in my church? I've learned by experience. Everybody that has to run up to me every Sunday and say, Brother Bell, I just love you. Look out. Look out. If you got to say it. Now, you may have to start out saying it. But if you love me, just show me. Just come and hug me and pray for me. And, you know, look at me nice once in a while. And be faithful to me. And then I'll say, they love me. They love me. I don't have to tell her every day that I love her. <laughs> I said I didn't have to. I didn't say that I didn't. Boy, you're tough, aren't you? Well, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to say anything else. I'll back off from that one, I guess. <laughs> now, but, but see, there's a Christ in me, and I can't help it, but it wants to cast out demons. <laughs> and it wants to lay hands on the sick. And I'm, I'm just going to make a confession. I want to get my hands on people. I like to touch somebody once in a while. I'm tired of TV. <laughs> and pornography. Some of you out here got that problem. You know there's no satisfaction. I'll be open with you. When I came to the Lord six years ago, I had a pile of playboys about that high. I had a collector's. I had a collection of them. God said, you've got to burn them. That's before I knew anything about deliverance or any of that stuff. God said, burn them. They were worth several hundred dollars. But why was the pile so high? Because there's no satisfaction in that room. The eyes don't satisfy. And I know I was an adulterer with my eyes. I know that. But the Lord's delivered me. And I tried to confess lust out of me. I tried to fast it out. But one day, I got smart and I cast it out. I cast out the old man that I might begin more and more to become the new Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hmm. Now, let's go on down in that verse, and it says, verse 20. Now unto him 
that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh where? In us. The dunamis in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Now, no man can bring unity to the church. No man can get us all together. We can have banquets and meals like we do in Dallas and talk all we want to about it. But until the Spirit brings it, it won't be. It's a work of the Spirit. It's a sovereign act of God, not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. But the glory of the church will be when we all begin to love one another and come together. I don't think that that means that we'll always all agree on all our doctrine. Because I think the most glorious thing that I can think of is for me to love a brother that I don't agree with his doctrine. Amen. And him love me, and he doesn't agree with mine. Now that's a miracle. So I ask you to agree with me today with verse 20. That this one who's able to do abundantly, exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, According to the power that worketh in us. Now, what do we need? We need to be able to love one another. And that's going to take a miracle. We, we, we need not only one big supernatural miracle today in this place, but we need one in every one of your lives. Amen. Okay. Now, I want to attack that. In the name of Jesus. And I want to attack it in this vein. I want to talk about the Father. Uh, let's go over to John. Look at John. And John 14. Let's start in verse 5. There's a good spirit in here. Sweet. Sweet in here. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now, verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then he goes on to talk about he will pray to the Father and ask for the Comforter to come and so on. Now, what kind of spirit has been sent into our hearts? What does it say? Who knows? Spirit of adoption, crying what? Abba Father. Daddy. Dada. I love how my little grandson calls me Papa. <laughs> Just the way he says it. You can tell him, you know. He loves me. Papa, I need to stay all night with you. <laughs> so, the, the Spirit has been sent into us of adoption, and it cries out, it causes us to cry out, Daddy, Father, 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 Father. The most important relationship on all 
in all of your life is Father. Father. Jesus said, I came to show you the Father. I came to reveal to you Daddy. How do we pray? Our Father. Who art in heaven. Here's heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your special daddy. <laughs> Your special daddy. I'm a father. I need a father. Now some of you may be here, you may be orphans or have come. Maybe you were adopted and you don't really know your parents. And there's all kinds of circumstances. And it's more and more because there's a great loss of the natural affections of parents. Mothers no longer love their children. But without, you know, going into great detail, if you'll notice what Jesus says in verse 11, Believe me, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Now what does he mean by that? Let's turn back over to Ephesians again, to the first chapter. Beginning about the third verse, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted, where? In the beloved. Hallelujah. Now, you can take this passage. I don't have a coin in my pocket. But a coin has two sides, heads and tails, right? And on one side, I can read this, and I can say, praise God, everybody's predestinated. Everybody's elected by God. Amen. On the other side, I can say, whosoever will may come. And I can either become a hyper-Calvinist, where there is absolutely no choice and total control. That's what it ended up with. Or I can become what they call an Arminian, where it's absolutely the decision of man. Now, I can go to seed on either doctrine, and men have. You can read, or you can write and get some paper up in Kentucky somewhere. <laughs> or you can write down Tyler, Texas, and get papers from the Calvinist, Calvinist Institute down there. And you'll go mad. Because you'll read one, you say, Amen, that's right, praise God, that's scriptural. That's right on, that's right on, Amen. And then, praise God, you pick up the other paper over here and you, Well, praise God, that's right too, Amen, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hmm. Now, to every doctrine, God in His infinite wisdom seemingly has put a <laughs> other side of the coin. Lord, what, what do I do? Praise God. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this, Lord. <laughs> Now, one of these days, we've got to settle down and say, well, praise God, I've got to make up my mind. I've got to get off the fence. I've got to decide. I had to decide. How did I have to decide? His deliverance real. <laughs> I've been through hell over that one. I've laid it up on the altar so many times that it's seared and, and scorched. <laughs> but the Lord keeps putting it back in my lap, back in my lap. <laughs> And you know how he puts it back in my lap? He sends me a basket case. <laughs> Every once in a while I get, well, I'm going to preach. You know, I'm going to get into some, mm, some other thing. I'm going to preach faith for a while. Praise God, we need a little faith. Here we go. And then here comes one of them. And that Christ rises up in me and begins to weep and cry to God and say, God, I want help. <laughs> What can I do, Father? Well, sit them down there and preach to them for a while, son. My God, Lord, they're deaf. They're deaf! One of the biggest ploys of the devil is deafness and blindness. Why? To shut you off from hearing the Word. And some of you are deaf and blind today, and I know it. Because of devils. 
I don't worship those damnable things. Can Satan cast out Satan, my God? Of course he can't. Where are we in Christ? Heavenly places? Amen. But we're in him. And he's in us. And there's a balance, see? He's in me. But I'm in him. I can go to seed on either one. Amen? You can. Now here's here's what happened to me. I'm going to be transparent. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Having not loved our lives unto the death. So we've got to die daily. We've got to die daily. All right? I've been hungry all my life. And as I said yesterday, I don't blame my parents. They did the best they were capable of doing. My dad grew up in the Depression. He got a sixth grade education. My mother didn't get through high school. And my dad worked hard. He worked for one company for over 35 years. And he finally took his GED, and they made him a manager. That's the biggest day of life. <laughs> and for many years, when I was growing up and going to high school, he worked swing shift. One week he'd work days, the next week he'd work evenings, and the next week he'd work at midnights. For years. And I've seen him go a whole week and he couldn't sleep. And he'd, get, he'd just become a tyrant, you know. After four or five days without sleep, you get, you get mean. Bless his heart. So they did the best they could. And, and, and they sacrificed for me. They always dressed me well, fed me well, let me take piano lessons, let me do this, let me do that. But nonetheless, I was hungry for love all my life. All my life. And I came into, I came into you know, uh, the flow of the Spirit six years ago. And I'm still hungry for love. But I, I go to the, the thing that, that, that hooked me was I went to a charismatic meeting in an Episcopal church one Friday night. I got trapped. And there was about four or five hundred people there. And they weren't a bunch of kooks. But they were just praising God. And, and I could, oh, there was something there. And I said, oh, God. Oh, I didn't say God. I said, but I said oh, boy. Ooh, and I went back, and my wife didn't go with her, and I said, let's go there next Friday night before we go have a drink. <laughs> and we sit there for the whole meeting. And even, I think we went down to communion with them. I said, man, what's happened to me? I know who I am. I'm Mr. Life of the Party. Mr. Reprobate, you know. But that, that love touched me. And boy, I began to dig. Somebody gave me a book. Nine o'clock in the morning. Written by one of those old terrible, wicked Episcopal priests. Where's his collar backwards? But God anointed that book because I didn't have a Bible. I thrown them all away. Sold all my commentaries from my Baptist days. Just cleaned it up. And I read that book. And I read it now and I said, what in the world did I see in that book? <laughs> but boy, there was something there that day. I gave, I don't know how many of them away, you know. But I wanted love. Well, Satan knew I wanted love. He's my adversary. And so we reached out and we passed her. We hadn't gotten in trouble. And the church split, and people tried to follow me, and, and we tried to have another fellowship for a while, but it was a work of pride, trying to prove a point. God said, shut it down, son. We had about 30, 30, 40 people, I guess, and we just shut her down one Sunday morning. Got up and I said, that's it. God said, shut this thing down. We're going to shut it down. We closed it down. And I didn't have a church. I didn't have a ministry. I didn't have a job. And didn't even have a place to live. We were living in a, a place just loaned to us. And, uh, boy, all at once, I had no identity. I didn't even have a denomination. 
Now, one of the hardest things for men to do is let go of denomination because they have to let go of identity. And we all need identity. We've got to have identity. Even if it's just being a devil caster at her. That's true. So along came some fellows and says, We'll help you. Huh? Yeah, we'll give you a, a place. Come on. Slip me about 500 bucks. Says, Go find you a place to live. And bless God, we said, Whoo, it's supposed to be God. And so we started fellowshipping with the shepherding boys. And boy, it didn't take us long. Something wrong here. Women are oppressed, hurting. Went to one party one night and everybody got about half tight. I said, whoa, that's what I came out of. Looks good. But boy, something wrong. So no identity there. Back out again. And looking, looking, looking. But I knew I couldn't go back to the Babylonian hen. No way. So praise God. God begins to start something in our home and it grows and I'll not get into that. But then I began to see that we had to have apostles and prophets and the fivefold ministry and all of that. And so I said, God, we need apostles. And I began to pray. And I'm not going to go into detail about it, but I was looking for a father. And I reached out for a father. And God began to deal with me about something. And he showed me something. Turn with me to Matthew 6.6. 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, or secret place, Shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, that may not mean much to you, but God's a jealous God. My Father's jealous of me. I finally found that out. And he said, Son... No man on this earth can be your father. This word says, call no man on earth father. And this word means what this word says. Praise God. Now, it's in here. Where am I? Flip over on me. Praise the Lord. So, Father was ministering to me because I was having a problem because of some things I began to see. Because this man I reached out to for a father, an apostolic image in my life, submitted to another man on me. And the other man was the same man in the shepherding group I'd already come out of. And I began to pray and I said, God, what are you doing? What are you going to do? And I prayed and I wrestled and I struggled. And I went on this for two, three weeks. And finally, one day I was driving and I said, Lord, tell me. He said, tell you, I told you, son, five years ago. Why do I have to tell you again? I took you around that mountain once. I said, Okay. But I said, i got to know. So for about two weeks, I just studied Father, 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 Father. And uh, praise God, he began to show me something, and something happened in my life. And let me see if I can just kind of wrap this up here right now. Now, first of all, over in uh, uh, Matthew 23, verse 8, the one I'm looking for, it says, Jesus is saying, but, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all, are, all ye are what? Brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven, 
Neither be ye called master, for one is your master, even Christ. All right? So, you see, we're all brethren. I may have a function of a teacher or pastor or, or whatever in the body, but I'm still a brother. I'm just a brother. I'm just a brother. Amen? I'm just functioning in, in the calling that God's given me. Praise God. Now, I want you to turn over to Hebrews 7. And I don't know how fragmented this might be. I'm just trying to follow the Spirit. Tenth verse. Or the eighth verse, rather. And I don't understand all of this, but I know God gave it to me, and it's changed my life. And it's talking about Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, however you want to pronounce it. And you remember, he's the priest of Salem that came out when Abraham was coming back from war, and Abraham tithed to him. He had no genealogy, he had no family tree, no beginning, no ending. Some say it's a type of Christ. It was Christ. Whatever. And it says, it's talking about how, how Abraham tithed to him. Then it begins in eight, verse 8. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he receiveth them, of whom it is written, he that liveth. And as I may say so, or so say, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek or Melchizedek met him. Now, what's the word saying? It's simply saying, it says, Levi tithed to Melchizedek. Well, how could, how could that be? Because Levi wasn't even alive. See, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then one of Jacob's sons was Levi, right? Four generations. And, and so Levi hadn't even, he wasn't even a twinkle in his father's eye yet. But the word says that Levi tied the Melchizedek. Now, how did he do it? It says he was in Abraham's, his great great grandfather's loin. Now, some of you are going to catch this. In Christ. How can I be in Christ? I come from the loins of my Father. How could it be that He chose me as one of His ministers before the foundations of the earth? Because He saw His seed. How did he see his seed? He saw him in his loins. And what the Father began to show me was that I came out of his loins. Now, remember what Paul said in Galatians. He says, when it pleased the Father to reveal the Son in me. Now, what does he say? He says, for many years I persecuted the church. But he says, from my mother's womb I was called, but when it pleased the Father to reveal the Son in me. Paul was called from the womb. Every call of God is a womb call. But many men don't serve the Lord until the Son is revealed in them. Because they don't know to serve the Lord. Now let me tell you what happened to me. I grew up, I felt the call to preach. I went and down in front in the Baptist church, I said the prayer. I got baptized. I felt the call to preach. I went and preached for eight years. Pastored. I preached longer than that, but I pastored for eight years. And then six years ago, I saw the sun. And I said, God, how could it be that I could go through all of that and even feel a call to preach and not even be born again? Which I wasn't. I'd heard a voice, but I'd seen no one. The Father says, well, the call's a womb call. You were feeling the call. You knew the call. But you didn't have... You, you couldn't do anything with it, son. Until I revealed the Son in you. 
Now, why it had to wait till I was 38, I don't know. I don't care. I just know from this day on, I'm going to serve him. And I'm going to preach his word and be obedient to him as much as I understand and know how. But he showed me this, and this will sum it all up, I hope. He showed me, I've known it for six years, that the biggest problem that I've got and every believer's got is rejection. We, we don't know who we are. We don't understand ourselves. And we can sit all day and people can talk to us and teach us and teach us and teach us. And we're duh. We don't get it. Because there's something rooted in me that's been there a long time, and it's an inability to receive that love and in turn give it. I know I tried. God, I want to. I'm going to love today. I'm going to love. And I know that when I come out of my office on Sunday morning and everybody's standing out there in the hallway, that I need to go to the brother and say, Hey, brother, how are you doing? Praise God. Hallelujah. How are you, sis? Praise the Lord. It's so good. But I didn't really feel like doing that. And I said, God, it's got to be real. I can hug from now till kingdom come, but I want it one day to be real. I want to feel it. I want to love your people, not because of a commandment, but because of a desire that raises up in me to love them. I want to love my children. I used to sit, I remember, I'd sit and I'd look at my daughters as they grew up. And, and there's something in me, sometimes I go up and weep. I say, God, I love them. God, I love those girls. But I couldn't touch them. I don't know whether I was afraid or what. I couldn't give them what I felt in here. And you know what I'm talking about. We're down where the rubber hits the road now. We're going to come down out of the heavenlies for a while. We're going to get down on, on where we live. In the bathroom, the kitchen, the bedroom. <laughs> That's where I want it to be. My God, I've played church for years. You hear me? But if I got to go home and live in hell, forget it. It ain't real. Either it works or it don't work. If it don't work, throw it away. Find something that does. I look for years. I, I reached out forever. I got in Zen. I got in hypnosis. I got in psychology. I got in marijuana. I got in alcohol. I said, my God, there's got to be something. And they're out there by the millions right now doing the same thing. And I came to Jesus and I said, this is it. But it's not really working. I've listened to tapes and listened to tapes. I've read books. I've read books. I've confessed. I'm but it's not really working. And I guess the most honest thing I can stand up and do is say, Father, it's not working. Show me how to make it work. Oh, I know you love me. Show me how to make it work. Hallelujah. So, I began to see that it was rejection. A root. Now, some men would call that schizophrenic revelation a fable. But I call it fabulous. Because it changed my life. Now, I've been working on that thing for five years. I knew that that root was so deep. It's just permeated into me that it's going to take time to get it all out. Get that old man out of me, that old rejected Steve Bell out of me. Glory to glory. A little bit here, a little bit there. A little deliverance here, a little word there. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Sound of music. <laughs> Sound of victory. Amen. <laughs> so, 
begin to work on that. And you know, it all finally boils down to natural father, period. Father. We're back to father again. And it's daddy. It's daddy. That's where it is. That's why Jesus says, I come to show you the father. I need a father. Well, God began to show me in the Word that I was His son. I came out of His loins. Hmm, hallelujah. Stay with me now. Let's, John, let's go to 1 John. I mean, John 1. Gospel of John, chapter 1. Verse 12. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power for to become what kind of power is that exousia authority power I've received as many as received him he gave them authority what to become Woo. what sons and even to them that believe on his name. Now look at verse 13. Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. It wasn't lust. It wasn't mom and dad's decision. It wasn't sex. It was the will of the Heavenly Father. I was born because I was wanted. I was planned for eons ago. My father says, I want that son. That son. That son. And I'm going to bring forth a son that I may bring forth that son. He's not trying to make a bunch of clones. He's making all of us to be different. Look at yourselves. Not a one of you in here alike. Not even anywhere near alike. Even the kids don't really, are not just exactly like you. Praise God. Aren't you glad? <laughs> he wants individuals. He wants to raise sons that have his son in them, but they're unique. In all of creation, an individual, a Stephen, a Mary, a Jane, a, a whatever. In fact, if he needs to, he'll, he'll change our name. He's already said he's definitely. He would give us a new name. And so, Father began to minister to me. Now, it all happened, and I mentioned it yesterday, finally. I was in a meeting in Houston with the Hammonds, and on the last Friday night, see, we'd planned, when we went to this meeting, to get some ministry from Frank and Ida. They'd ministered to us a couple of times in the last three years very effectively. Now, here's my understanding of deliverance, brothers and sisters. Most of us should not need it every week. God, in our lives, about four times, or maybe three, we've had a significant ministry and stepped up to another plane. There's a timing for this. When we're ready to go and then possess the land and then hold it. So don't press God with this. Wait on it. Now, some of you are so pressed that we just need to work with you maybe day after day after day until we can get you free enough just to function. God bless you. But once you get into that, there's going to be stages where you'll have a significant deliverance. And then it might be months. Now, I'm not talking about the daily things. Things will come at you, lust and so on, and you'll, you'll resist them and cast them off and shake them off like Paul did the serpent. Get off of me. Speak to the devil. And, and that sort of thing. But significant breakthroughs, okay? Led of the Lord. And so we said, this is it. Praise God, we need some more. We're going to get with Frank and Ida. We're not going to have any day meetings, and we'll get some ministry. And, uh, but pray, four days, they had things going on with their family and so on. We never got together. Here it was Friday night, 
And, and as I said, Frank was ministering, and there I was walking around trying to help people, and I was so kooky with what was going on in me, I finally just sat down and said, forget it, I'll get some myself. But I didn't get any to speak of. But I knew something was stirred up. I was stirred up. I stirred up. <laughs> Mine was spinning, you know. You know, some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and you know it's not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> It's the unholy ghost. <laughs> Praise God for discernment. Now, so finally about 2.30 in the morning, we went on up into the hotel room, and we laid down finally, <laughs> turned the lights out. I said, I said, honey, I said, I am so stirred up. I, I gotta, we got to do something. And normally, I don't think it's best for the wife to minister to the husband, but we were between a rock and hard place, as they call it. And I said, you're just going to have to agree with me and help me. So she turned the light on, got up, and got a trash can, <laughs> and all those repugnant things that we get. And I got on the side of the bed, and I knew it had to, I thought it, a lot of it to do with my mother. She'd been very dominating of me all of my life and tried to control me, and, and it just really been tough. And, and, and sure enough, boy, we worked on some of those things, and I just broke. See, there, there's a thing like a placenta in the spirit. And we've seen people with this. And Mama just wants to feed with that placenta in the spirit. Don't understand it, but it works that way. And so we just cut all that and so on. And uh, because sometimes I'd do things or I'd get some ministry, and guess who'd call within an hour or two? Mother. How did Mother know? Huh? How did Mother know that the last thing I needed to hear was her voice right then? Talking to me like little Stevie. Hmm? Spirit world's real. He might as well just face it and learn how to deal with it. So, have some pretty, you know, when you get down to the root stuff, it's, it's painful. And see, God will take you layers. You get down to the real stuff when you're four, five, two, three years old, boys. So we, we said, praise God, turned the light out, laid back down, and it was pitch dark in the room, and in an instant of a twinkling of an eye, God's Spirit took me into my mother's womb. I mean, I said, here, honey, you're not going to believe this, but I see myself in my mother's womb. And I could feel myself just like that. And I said, this is weird. I never had God do anything like that. And, and, and my back was turned toward her belly. I said, this is wild. What are you trying to show me, Father? And all at once I knew by knowledge that I was eight months term. I knew that. Pretty well formed, you know. And, and all at once I knew that my mother and father were having a knockdown drag out. That my father had come home evidently a little tight. And my mother had gotten all over him, and then they got an argument about how much it's going to cost to have the baby. And all at once, my father decided, I don't want that damn kid. Now, he didn't really mean it. It's just a moment of passion, but he just, I don't want that kid. And right there, right there, God showed me, rejection came in. A spirit came into that fetus. A spirit came into that spe fetus by permission of my father. He opened the door. He didn't want me. Now it may not have lasted. The next day, he may have got him and said, "What did I say? I didn't mean that." But he opened the door, and they weren't believers. How blessed you are to grow up with Christian parents, mostly, <laughs> unless they put you in religious bondage. And you can imagine, there I was experiencing this, and I just fell out of the bed and fell on the floor of my face, and I, I never sobbed so deeply in all my life. I mean, I felt like I was shaking that whole hotel. I said, oh God, my father didn't want me. I felt that rejection. And I was just weeping and weeping, and, and I said, you, you leave me, you leave me. And all at once, father spoke in, in my ears. 
And he said, son, he said, I gave you life. Huh. I thought my mother and father gave me life. He said, I, I'm the father of spirits. I'd read that. In the Word. Now, you see how the Word works with deliverance? I read it. And it confirmed it. I'm the Father. I gave you life. Your mother and father were just vessels to bring together what I wanted, but I breathed the breath of life into you, son. And you're mine. And I preserved your life in the womb because my father had thoughts of abortion. He says, and I love you. And I preserved your life till now. And I shall keep you. Call it whatever you will. I rolled over on my back, and there's great gushes of phlegm and mucus just... <sighs> I coughed and gagged. And it went all over my face. I didn't care. I was free. That's personal. But it's real. Because for weeks... And even now, I don't really know who I am. As far as all those old false things are gone. They're gone. So what do you do? You kind of feel hollow. Until the Word begins to build in you. To know how to act. To know how to act. But... Everybody knows that I'm different. I got three of the saints from our church here today. They can tell you. Something's changed. My wife can tell you. My children can tell you. I'm different. I got delivered of rejection. I found out who my father was. I was born of God. I don't have a family tree. Now, when it comes into experience like that, you got something. And I just want to shout it from the housetop. I, I wish I could just right now just sovereignly give every one of you that. I really do. Because I love you. And if you don't know it by now, it doesn't matter whether I say it or not anyway. good news is that God has made a way for us to bring this living word into everyday experience. And our first big challenge is putting off the old man. We reckon him dead. But see, this soul we've got is a neutral vessel and it'll just express whatever spirit's coming through it. And if it's a demon spirit, it'll express it. That demon will train us to talk like it wants us to talk, think like it wants us to think, and so on. And that's what we're wrestling. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. I thought we'd made that plain. But with spirits, principalities, powers, rulers. That's what our problem is. Now, the, the natural mind, the intellect doesn't like to receive that. I was I can I prided myself on intellectualism. I prided myself on my grades in school. I prided myself as a student. And God had to deal with that thing up there. And he dealt with it through deliverance. I've been told all my life, what will people think? And they don't think too highly, casting out demons. God knew what I needed. Because he loved me. Now, I want to minister to you a little bit. I promise you I'd minister to you about rejection. 
God's word's true. If you're born again, he is your father. And you need to know who your father is. And whatever your earthly father was, it doesn't matter, really, except for what effect it had on your life. Most of us got this put on us before we had a chance to even fight it. The devil doesn't play fair. And so once we know where it's coming from, we know what to do about it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say everybody's going to get totally delivered of rejection today. God has promised me the day's coming where I'll just be able to decree that. I just stand and say, in the name of Jesus, every rejection spirit come out. Oh, glory. And then you talk about having a hugging time. Because if you get free of this, you can hug. <laughs> Man, you can hug a woman without lusting after. Hallelujah. <laughs> Greet the brethren with a holy kiss. Father, I thank you, Father, for what you've done for me. I thank you, Father, for your love. I thank you, Father, for the practicality of the Word. I thank you, Father, that it comes right down upon the earth, dwells in a clay pot. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you today for the sweetness of the Spirit that's here. I thank you for answering my prayer that there just be a spirit of love just engulf us. And I just loose forth that spirit even into a greater degree now, Lord, to a double anointing. That all of us here would begin to actually literally feel your love, Father. That we know that you love us. But just right now, just receive the ministry, all right? In Jesus' name. I bind the strong man. I curse that root of rejection. I come against you. I bind you rebellion, stubbornness. I come against you. In Jesus' name, you loose God's people. You loose God's people. In Jesus' name, I come against unbelief and doubt. I bind you. I command you to go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I cast you out, Beelzebub. I cast you out. I cast you out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Loose God's people. Loose us. Get out. Inability to give love. Inability to receive love. Get out. Get out. I cast you out. Get out. Come on. Get out. I break your power and hope. Go. Go. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus. By the power of his blood, I come against you. I command you to go. I command you to go. Each one that will receive, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Loose God's people. Loose us. Loose us. We put off the old man in Jesus' name. I want you to just personally renounce rejection. Get out. Get out. You say, I, I loose myself to love. In Jesus' name now, you spirits. Inferiority, insecurity, get out. Lust, you get out. Lust, spirits, go. Lust, come out. Lust, come out. Lust, I cast you out. Lust, get out. Lust, I cast you out. Go. Go. Get out, lust. In the name of Jesus, get out. Lust, I cast you out. Lust and unclean sexual spirits, loose us. Go, lust, in the name of Jesus. Go, you devils, I bind you and cast you out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. All the unclean sexual spirits, go. All the unclean sexual spirits, get out. Get out of God's people. Pornography. Lust. Lust of the eyes. Get out. Get out, you devils. Get out. I cast out you demons of lust, unclean sexual spirits, incest, abortion, abortion spirits. Come out. Abortions, murder spirits. Come out. Incest spirits. Come out. I break the curse of incest. Come out, you curses of incest. You curses of incest. Jesus has redeemed us from you. Get out. Get out. We come to appropriate it in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Get out. All the incest, all the incest, all the bestiality. Get out, get out, loose us. 
We break and free ourselves from that. In the name of Jesus Christ, go, 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 go. Come on, demons, out. Out in the name of Jesus. Get out, come on. All of you, out. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Get out, masturbation spirits. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Loose us. You'll not take our dignity anymore. Get out. You'll not take our dignity anymore. You'll get out. Loose us. Get out, lust. Get out, lust. Get out, lust. Pornography, adultery, fornication spirits. Go. In Jesus' name, loose our minds. Get out of us. Get out of us. Get out of God's people. Get out. I cast you out. Fear of rejection. Self-rejection. Get out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out. Loose God's people. Loose us. You're a liar. You're trespassers. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go. In the name of Jesus. Go. Go. I speak restore. I speak restore to the mind, the will, the emotions. Get out. Get out. I speak restore. Restore. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus and through the power of His blood. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Bitterness, you come out. Bitterness. I curse the root of bitterness. Come out, bitterness. Bitterness, bitterness and hatred, bitterness because I wasn't loved. Get out, get out, get out. Come on. Oh, I cast you out. Go. Come on. You spirits of bitterness, get out. Get out. In Jesus' name, unforgiveness. Get out, get out, get out, get out. In Jesus' name, all you shields of rejection, come out. Loneliness, loneliness and depression, come out. Depression and loneliness, I cast you out. Go. Depression and loneliness, go. Depression and loneliness, go. Suicide, suicide, I cast you out. Spirits of suicide, get out. Suicide, self-destruction, go. Go, get out, get out, get out, get out. Loose, loose and go. Get out, get out. I cast you out in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Suicide, get out. Suic loneliness, depression, mood swings, go. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out, get out, get out. Get out, in Jesus' name. All the fear spirits, go. All the fears, go. Fears. Fears that I'll fail. Fears that I'll stumble. Fear of persecution. Get out. Get out. Come on, fear. Fear. Fear hath torment. Get out. Fear. Perfect love. Cast it out. Father loves us. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out, demons. Get. Go. Go. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go. 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 Continue to go. Continue to go. Rejection, you come out. Rejection, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. In Jesus' name. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Perfectionism. Paranoid spirits. Go. Go. Paranoid fears. Go. Critical spirits. Go. Come on. Out. 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 Self-condemnation. I'm no good. I'm ugly. I'm unworthy. Get out. Get out. Get out. Guilt. Guilt and unworthiness. Go. Go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Out. 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 In Jesus' name. In the name of Yeshua. Praise you, Jesus. Get out. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, I want to take these last minutes together here, whatever we got. And I, this is always tough. But if you do it, it'll do something. I want you to find you a partner. And I want you to find you a partner and minister to each other. And the way I want you to minister to each other, I want you to hold each other and love each other. I want one of you to start and you love that person. And then I want the other one to love the other one. And while you're ministering to each other, just touching, holding, loving, I'm going to rebuke the devil. And you say, what good does that do? Well, it drives them crazy. In fact, you're already nervous. Don't touch me. Touch me not. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, this is hard. 
But uh, I want you to find your partner. And it probably had not ought to be your spouse. A man ought probably need a man find you a man. Women find you a, a woman. As you minister, just release your love. Now, Father, I ask you to help each one that ministers to release the agape love in them. Just make a decision. Just say right now, I'm going to release my love. The love of Jesus that's in me for this person. I make a decision now to love them with the love of the Lord that they might get free of rejection. All right? Put it on them. In the name of Jesus. Now, if they start weeping, just tell that spirit to leave. Touch me not, you go. I bind the spirit of touch me not. I cast you out. Get out. Get out. In the name of you see him. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Go ahead, love him. In the name of Jesus. Rejection, you've got to get out. We're, we've decided to love. We've decided to love. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.